Welcome back to the Android Developer Video Handbook. Now that we have our Android Developer account all ready to go, I've decided that before we get into any complex app programming, that it would be best to quickly demonstrate a Hello World Android app in both Eclipse and Flash CS 5.5. Therefore, this video will focus on creating a Hello World Android app using Eclipse and Java. And for those of you who are not familiar with what Hello World is, that is basically the first application that any programmer would create when they get into learning any programming language. So really it's the most basic of basic type application that you can render in any programming language. And this one will focus on using Eclipse with Java. Okay, first step is go back to the android.com website, click developers at the bottom, and then the SDK is what we want to download, the Android SDK. And it has tools, sample, code, and docs you need to create great apps. So let's click Learn More. And since I'm using Windows 7, I'm going to get the installer for Windows. So I'm going to click this one. Now the next step is we're going to go to Eclipse.org. So just navigate your browser to Eclipse.org. Click Downloads. And we're going to get the Eclipse IDE for Java developers because that just happens to be the more popular tool that people are using for Java application development. And I'm going to click Windows 64 bit because I have a Windows 64 bit operating system. So I'm going to click that. And then now I'm going to click this green arrow to download it. And it's downloading it. Chrome is downloading it to my downloads folder. Same location where I downloaded the Android SDK. And that one's 99 megabytes. And some of you guys already might have these tools in place on your machine, in which case you don't have to download it again. Now while Eclipse is downloading into our downloads folder, we're going to go and download the Java JDK, which is available at oracle.com. So you can navigate to oracle.com, hover your mouse over downloads, and you'll see over here in popular downloads, Java for developers, you click that. And then you'll see the Java SE downloads, and that's the one we want. And you can see down here it says, what Java do I need? And in order to develop Java applications and applets, you need the JDK, the development kit, which also includes the JRE. So let's download JDK here. Accept the license agreement, and then we can go into the downloads and find the ones we need. And I have Windows X64. So you just pick your proper operating system. Now here we are on our desktop with those three items that we just downloaded from the web for free. Now this is the Android SDK, this is the Java Development Kit, and this is Eclipse. So we're going to have to install the Java Development Kit first before we can install the Android SDK because if we try and install the SDK, it'll just prompt us to install the JDK. It'll prompt us to download and install the JDK. So let's just install the JDK first, allow it, and also allow it to install the Java runtime environment if you get that prompt. Now you just click finish. Now I can install the Android SDK. So I'm going to double click that. Allow it. Next. Click next. Install. Next. Now we're going to start the SDK manager. Keep that check mark in that box and click finish. and it's going to do some gathering of certain things that you're going to need so you can see all of these packages are ready to go and these that have question marks you can choose to accept them if you like I'm going to accept all and then install then seven years later when all 32 packages are installed it'll say done 32 packages installed and you can click close and you have all these things now at this point I'm going to close the Android SDK Manager. And now at this point, even without installing Eclipse, you can develop for Android if you know how to work the command line. But using Eclipse to create Java apps for Android is the preferred method and most people creating Android applications are using Eclipse. I'm going to try and change that into most people that are developing Android applications are using Flash. Haha. -ha. Now at this point we're going to set up Eclipse and get it ready to open so let's extract here so you can right click select extract here and on your desktop it's going to make a folder called Eclipse right there and you can put that anywhere you want 
double click inside and you don't have to install anything you can just run it from the folder here you can double click Eclipse it's going to ask you to define a workspace and my workspace is on my desktop a folder called workspace which I created press OK alright once Eclipse is open we just have to install the Android stuff within Eclipse that way we have it available when Eclipse is open you go to help install new software up in the top right here click add the name is going to be ADT plugin and the location is this URL and the Android developer documentation recommends if you have any trouble downloading the plugin from this URL that you can use it without the HTTPS which is just a security measure but it should work both ways but first try it with the S and then press OK it says pending and now it says developer tools if you hit this little arrow you'll see exactly what's in there OK now tick this checkbox here to put a check in, in it and then click next review the items to be installed next and then I accept the terms and then click finish now if you get this security warning that pops up it says you're installing the software that contain it says warning you're installing software that contains unsigned content blah 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 do you want to continue okay I don't care it says you will need to restart Eclipse for the installation changes to take effects you may try to play the changes around it's retarding but this may cause error so let's restart Eclipse now and here it comes back again click my familiar workspace OK now if you go to window you'll see that you have Android SDK and ABD manager down there you see that and the last step in Eclipse before we can actually get in there and develop something for Android is to configure our preferences so let's go to window preferences select Android here if it's not selected and let's place in the SDK location on our computer you can just browse your computer, your program files, wherever those are on your system. Mine is in my C drive. Program files and Android. Android SDK. OK. Apply. And there we go. Now I'll press OK. So the first thing we'll do is go to File, New, Project. Android. We'll just make it an Android project. Next. So let's give this project the name of Hello World. Contents, just leave that like it is. Leave that checked. And the build target, you can choose whatever you like. But I'm going to choose the Android 2.2, which is what most people have on their phones right now. Or you can target Android 3, which is the honeycomb version of Android. And that's for the Galaxy tab and things like that. And Android 3.1 is the very latest. But a lot of the code and the applications that you can create will be backwards and forwards compatible between the different Android operating systems. It's just that some that you create might require Android 3.0 and things like that. It might require Android 2.2. So I'm just going to target Android 2.2. I'm going to scroll down some. So in the properties section, we just set the application name and the package name, which the package name has to have at least two identifiers and it has to be unique unique in the Android system you keep the create activity check mark in place and what this does is it creates a subclass so the name of the subclass will be hello world activity and that's going to be a subclass in the activity class of Android and the min SDK version should be in place for you already now let's click finish now since we're going to be running this project and testing and debugging it within the Android emulator which is the emulator comes with the package and what it does is allow you to view how your Android app is going to operate on the Android operating system before you actually get it on an Android operating system so in order to do that we have to create an AVD which is an Android virtual device so we'll go to window Android SDK and AVD manager then we'll click new over here on the top right this one we can just put test AVD click the target tab here 
and I selected Android 2.2 I believe for my application so that's what I'll set for the emulator and now we can go and click create AVD at the bottom but we're not going to start it yet now at any point if you happen to close Eclipse or you close that little welcome tab you hit the little X that's on that welcome screen and you don't see your project behind that welcome screen you can just go to file open file and you go to your desktop where you had the workspace folder you click hello world or the package that you're creating whatever application and the doc project file is the one you want to open and if yours happens to look like mine and you want to see the project explorer window on the left here you can go to window show view project explorer so what I'll do is click on this little arrow to expand that source folder then I'll expand this arrow so I get to a file that says .java then I'll know that's the source code for my package or my application so I can double click that and it'll load into the window here so you can see the code for the hello world activity subclass which is a subclass of the activity class in Android okay now we're going to make our application live by making it actually output some text or something and make it say hello world and you can do this easily by going underneath if you have your plus sign there if you only see one line make sure you hit your plus sign open that up and you'll see two lines there where you're importing certain things into the application we're going to add one more line to import the android.widget.text view now we're going to go under this line and pop in these three lines of code so what you're doing is creating a new text field or text view object and then you use the set text method on that text to say hello world so you're defining it so you're defining what its values will be or its value whatever string value you want and then you set context view my text actually you can comment this line out because we don't need that now we can run this in the emulator and see if it pumps out the words hello world so we'll go to run click run Android application yes save your changes then it opens it up in the Android emulator allow it to load and now you can slide your phone or whatever device this is open and there it is it opens up automatically so when you want to close this thing you can just go down here if you're on Windows 7 down to your menu or your taskbar and right click that close window if you don't happen to have that and it's all and it's too big for you to actually close you can just go to control alt delete start your task manager target that window and end task now the final task is rendering this out as a .apk file which is the target file that we need to upload to the Android marketplace when everything is completed we're just going to export in debugging mode that way we'll still get our APK file and things will run the way they're supposed to first we have to know where our key store information is so we can go to window preferences then you go to Android you can open it up by hitting the little arrow and click build and then you'll see your default debug key store which is in the dot android folder so on my system if I go to users Adam the dot android folder I'll have my debug dot key store key in place already so I can just press cancel on that I just wanted to see where it is so now I'll go to file export now we're going to export to get the APK file which is what gets uploaded to the Android store when you're exporting your project for real right now we're just going to export in debugging mode but the process is very much the same if you're exporting for the market so you go to Android export Android application next select the project to export and you can just go to browse and your project should be there select it OK no errors found click next now we'll use existing key store we go to browse so if I go to my computer my C drive users Adam dot Android debug dot key store double click that and it puts it in place the password is Android a n d r o i d all lowercase next the key alias will be Android debug key and that password is Android as well 
all lowercase. Next, destination APK file. You see there, that's what we were after. So let's just put that on our desktop. We'll save it as hello world. Actually, let's create a new folder on our desktop. So let's play new folder, hello world APK. There's a new folder, I'll double click inside of it, and the file name is hello world, save. Click finish. Now on our desktop, you can see I have this folder called hello world APK. And there's an APK file. What do you know? And that's the kind of file that you put up to the market online. But like I said, and it's very important that you guys keep this in mind, that when you're putting in the information for your key store information, we used debug.keystore file, and you cannot do that when you're exporting an app for real from Eclipse to put it up in the market. You have to actually use information from your Android developer account. It makes perfect sense, and it's not too hard to figure out. Okay, guys, and here's finally some information that'll help you understand properly signing your applications. You can go to this URL at the Android developer site and research app signing. That way you're in the know about everything you need to know about properly signing your applications because as you noticed I signed and I used key store information that was for debugging mode and I would have to put in private information that's unique to my developer account if I were not using debug mode. And after the next lesson where we show how to do this process and render out a hello world.apk from flash cs 5.5 we're gonna go ahead and load that up to the marketplace so we'll have something where you guys can actually go to the marketplace at Android and you'll see my application there so you'll know that everything that I'm showing is on the up and up okay that'll be in the next lesson well actually the next lesson will show how to create the APK in flash cs 5.5 a little hello world application and then the one after that is when we're going to actually load up to the marketplace. And then after that, we can kind of cruise and, and show you guys how to do different things in Eclipse and Flash CS 5.5 to better your applications. Or maybe to understand how to begin application development. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure where this series will end, but we'll definitely get you guys up and running.